as long as we have looked to the heavens, we have seen our home galaxy, the Milky Way, as a serene, shimmering river of light across the night sky. It has long been a symbol of cosmic stability, a grand spiral structure that we felt we understood. We charted its majestic arms and measured its steady rotation, taking comfort in its familiar, predictable nature. But in science, our understanding is only as good as our observations. And with the arrival of the James Webb Space Telescope, our ability to observe has taken a quantum leap forward. In the relatively short time since it began its mission, Webb has given us a startling new view of the cosmos. It has the unique ability to peer through vast curtains of cosmic dust that have, for all of history, obscured our view of the most critical regions of our own galaxy. And the picture it is sending back is challenging many of our long-held ideas. It reveals a story that is not one of quiet majesty, but one of a far more dynamic and complex evolution. The neat and tidy story of the Milky Way is being replaced by something more intricate and, I think, infinitely more fascinating. So, what exactly has Webb found lurking in the shadows of our galaxy? And what does it tell us about our own cosmic origins? Now, to appreciate the significance of what Webb is accomplishing, it's helpful to first understand the fundamental challenge that astronomers have faced for generations. The very heart of our galaxy, its central core, is located about 25,000 to 26,000 light years away toward the constellation Sagittarius. And between us and that core lie immense opaque clouds of interstellar gas and dust. For a telescope like Hubble, which sees primarily invisible light, trying to look into the galactic center is like trying to see the details of a painting through a frosted window. The visible light from the core is scattered and absorbed by that intervening dust long before it reaches us. It's a profound observational barrier. For decades, the most important and dynamic region of our own galaxy remained largely a blank spot on our cosmic map. But this is where the genius of the Webb telescope comes into play. Where visible light is blocked, infrared light can pass through. You can think of it in the same way a thermal camera can see the heat signature of a person through thick smoke. Webb is engineered to do precisely that, but on a galactic scale. Its magnificent golden mirrors and exquisitely sensitive instruments are optimized to capture that infrared light, which travels almost unimpeded through the dust clouds. It is, in essence, the key that was designed specifically to unlock this hidden part of the universe. With this key, astronomers are now able to bypass that dusty veil and gaze directly into the heart of the Milky Way. But it does more than that. By looking at very distant galaxies, Webb also functions as a kind of time machine. It allows us to look back billions of years and see galaxies that are analogues for our own Milky Way in its youth. So we're not just observing. We are, in a sense, engaging in a new form of cosmic archaeology, piecing together the story of our own galaxy's formation. The classical model of the Milky Way's formation was one of elegance and order. It described a vast cloud of primordial gas that over eons slowly and gracefully collapsed under its own gravity, flattening into the majestic spiral we inhabit today. It's a neat picture, but as it turns out, the reality was likely much more interesting. One of Webb's first major contributions to this story came from its deep field observations of ancient galaxies, which serve as proxies for our own galaxy's past. By analyzing these distant systems, a more detailed timeline for our own galaxy's evolution has started to emerge. We've known for some time that our galaxy has a dual disk structure. There's a thin disk where younger stars like our sun are found. But embedded within it, is an older, puffier, thick disk. A long-standing question has been how this layered structure came to be. Thanks to the remarkably clear data from Webb, we now have a much clearer answer. Think of it like baking a layered cake. The evidence now strongly suggests the thick disk formed first. 
the early universe was a turbulent place. And in this chaotic environment, our galaxy's formation was not a gentle collapse, but a series of messy events. This turbulence fueled intense bursts of star formation, creating a thick, rustic, and somewhat disorganized first layer of the cake, the thick disk. Only after this initial, more violent phase did the galaxy begin to settle. The gravity from these first generations of stars helped to stabilize the remaining gas. From this calmer reservoir of material, a new, more orderly layer began to form inside the pre-existing thick one. This is the thin disk, a smoother, more refined layer where our own solar system was born billions of years later. This discovery is profound because it replaces a simple picture with a two-act story of co-evolution. Our galactic home was built on the foundations of an ancient, more turbulent structure. And this new insight into our galaxy's early years is just the first part of the story Webb is helping to tell. The next part concerns the dynamic engine at the very center of it all. At the gravitational center of our galaxy lies Sagittarius, a star, our supermassive black hole. With the mass of four million suns, it is a true behemoth. For many years, the prevailing view was that Sagittarius A star was largely quiescent, a sleeping giant that would only occasionally flare up as it consumed a passing gas cloud or star. Once again, Webb's unique capabilities are challenging this picture. Using its near-infrared camera, astrophysicists have carried out the most detailed observations ever made of the region immediately surrounding the black hole. And what they are finding is not a sleeping giant, but a system in a state of constant, unpredictable activity. The area around Sagittarius A star is never quiet. One lead researcher described it as being in a state of constantly changing, bubbling brightness. Punctuating this simmering glow are brilliant flares of energy from the very edge of the event horizon. And these are not rare occurrences. Webb's observations have revealed that our black hole produces several large, bright flares every single day, with countless smaller flickers happening constantly. What's fascinating is that this activity appears to be entirely random. There is no discernible pattern to the timing or the brightness of the flares. This constant, unpredictable fireworks display challenges our models of how black holes are fed. The source is thought to be a process called magnetic reconnection. Imagine twisting a handful of rubber bands together tighter and tighter. Eventually, the tension becomes too much and they violently snap, releasing a burst of energy. This is what's happening on a cosmic scale, where tangled magnetic field lines in the superheated gas orbiting the black hole violently snap, releasing tremendous amounts of energy. Webb's ability to see this process in such exquisite detail gives us an unprecedented window into the physics at play at the very brink of a black hole. By peering into the heart of our own galaxy, we gain insights that inform our understanding of all supermassive black holes across the cosmos. The engine at our galaxy's center is not a passive object. It is an incredibly dynamic and active one. Now, what is truly wonderful is when we can connect these two major revelations, the complex two-phase birth of our galaxy and the restless nature of its central black hole. These are not separate findings. They are deeply intertwined parts of a single sweeping cosmic story. The turbulent era that formed the galaxy's thick disk was not just a period of rapid star birth. That same chaotic inflow of gas that created those ancient stars also provided the fuel that allowed the central black hole to grow into the four million solar mass object it is today. Think of a giant whirlpool forming in a river. The same powerful churning currents that carve out the wide, turbulent basin of the whirlpool are also what funnel water and debris down into the very center, making the vortex itself grow stronger. The galaxy's dynamic youth and the growth of its central black hole are a story of co-evolution. 
and the activity we now see from Sagittarius A star, the constant bubbling flares, can be understood as the lingering effects of that formative history. The heart of our galaxy is a living engine, and the cosmic fireworks Webb is observing are a direct consequence of the turbulent processes that shaped our galactic home from its very beginning. What Webb provides is a more unified narrative, where the formation of the galaxy and the evolution of its central engine are inextricably linked. For centuries, our view of the Milky Way was one of cosmic peace and quiet. Our science was built on an image of serene grandeur. The James Webb Space Telescope is now allowing us to pull back the curtain of dust and see that our galaxy's story is far more dynamic than we knew. We now understand that our galaxy was not born in serene collapse, but was forged in a more complex and turbulent process, creating a foundational thick disk of ancient stars. And at its heart, the supermassive black hole we once thought was mostly dormant is, in fact, a remarkably active engine, producing a constant display of unpredictable flares. We are, of course, just at the beginning of this new era of discovery. Every image Webb sends back holds the potential for new insights that can push the frontiers of our understanding. We have a powerful new tool to make contact with the cosmos, and it is showing us that the story of our galaxy, and therefore our own story, is still being written. The Milky Way is not some static object in a cosmic museum. It is a living, evolving and wonderfully complex system, and we are privileged to be able to see it with new eyes.